So this is Freddie Lee at uh, Freddie's Modern Kung Fu. I'm excited to announce that I've gotten uh, four um, wooden dummies for the school. Three of them are Jeet Kune Do dummies, basically having the neck, and then one of them is a Wing Chun dummy. Um, these are purchased, three of them are purchased from uh, everythingwingchun.com, and then one of them was from shaolinhouse.com. Um, all of them are high quality dummies, and I uh, Highly recommend all these uh, wooden dummies right here. The freestanding ones are the ones that save you a lot of space. And um, I'm just going to give you an up close look at each one of them. Here's the first one. This is the tallest one that I got. Um, it comes with it comes with place that you can put in the bottom to make it taller. I put all four plates that came with it. And it ended up becoming the tallest one. This one's also the thickest one. It has the thickest arms out of all of them. Some people might prefer the larger arms. This is definitely made for a bigger person. Probably like six feet or, or taller for this one. This one's more built for my size. I like this one. This one's from the Shaolin House. Um, I really like the quality of this one, but unfortunately, I don't know if. The Shaolin House is in business anymore, but it's a very high quality wooden dummy that I really liked. I made it taller. It didn't come with these plates, but I got these plates from the other wooden dummies that I purchased and I put it on here. I put four extra plates to make it taller. I like working with the wooden dummy that's taller because it's simulating somebody that's taller than me. Usually everybody that I spar is always going to be taller than me because I'm only 5'5". Five five. So I like to make the wooden dummy a little bit taller for myself. This one I just received today. This is a winch on dummy. As you notice, it doesn't have a neck. The ones that have the neck are considered the Jeet Kune Do dummies. The one that doesn't have the neck is the winch on dummy. Um, this is a very high quality one. I really like it. The arms are pretty thick. Very strong. And I put two plates on the bottom of this one to make it a little bit taller. One difference that I noticed with the Wing Chun dummy is that there's um, it's lower. These arms are lower. There's a lot of head space right here. The Jeet Kune Do dummy there's not that much head space, but here there's a lot of head space. It's different. The arms are lower. If you can look at the positioning of the arms, they're lower. Okay, and this one is the most expensive one that I have. It's a different type of wood. This one looks a little bit more traditional. This one I only put one plate in the bottom. And this one, how this one looks. So I, I, I've, I've arranged this and it comes from the shortest to the tallest. And once again, I want to show these wooden dummies to basically signify that um, I wish to promote. I wish to promote the Chinese martial arts and what I do, the Chinese culture, um, with these wooden dummies. This is specific for the Chinese martial arts, specific for Kung Fu, Wushu, uh, Wing Chun, Jeet Kune Do, Tai Chi, things like that. Um, as you can see, I also got a drum right here, which is for the lion dance. And then I also got the lion head up here. It's facing the other way though. So, um, the little things like this make a huge difference to me. Um, I use weight sets. I got a punching bag. I got a bob dummy. Um, I'll show you that as well. Um, got a punching bag right here. I got a bob dummy right there. Okay. Um, and then I got weights here, weight sets. Bench press, squat rack, dumbbells. Um, I'm all about training with variety to basically get a feeling of everything. Like, but I want to promote the Chinese martial arts, and this, you know, these wooden dummies is a huge part of that. You don't really see this. You're not gonna really see this in a, you know. A boxing gym or anything like that or 
or a gym and for that matter, they might have a punching bag, but they're not really going to have wooden dummies. So I want to pretty much make this very different, set this apart from the combat sport into something more, um, more of the Chinese martial arts, more about wushu. Something else that I got is the um, the canvas bag that I put against the wall. This is for building up the fist, to strengthen the fist. So you see that this is very different. We're going to be building up fist strength. So, you know, I'm excited to represent the best that I can to put this out there to just kind of, you know, be a little bit more clear of like separating the differences, you know, the difference between boxing and kickboxing and then Muay Thai, okay? Boxing, they're, you're going to be wearing those gloves and, you know, we all know about boxing and then there's kickboxing which is basically with the gloves but then there's kicking involved and then there's the Thai boxing which is the punching, the kicking and the elbows and the knees and all that. Um, and then we got the cage fighting which incorporates you know the Muay Thai in addition to some groundwork but what I practice is none of that it's basically um, preparation for street combat and um, you know no gloves no rules survival training the only things that you're gonna follow are the guidelines by the law in which they say that you're justified in taking this person's life in this situation and you're justified in defending yourself in this situation if anything those are the rules the rules of the law you know trying to abide by the rules you know getting the concealed carry license if that's what you want to do um, just protecting your life that's what I want to focus on and that's what I want to disidentify myself with what's going on with the combat sport but also at the same time promoting the Chinese culture the Chinese ways, the Chinese way of thinking, um, the Dao De Ching. Um, so I'm promoting more of the Ji Kune Do, Dao De Ching, more of the Eastern Chinese way. All right. Um, also, little things that I also do is also just incorporating kind of like a little bit of firearms training. We got like a little target area here, and then um, working with proper aiming with the gun and everything, and so. You know, even getting used to just kind of throwing, throwing stars and throwing knives, just to kind of get used to that as well. Um, basically, I want to truly um, just diversify my training to get you know a taste of a little bit of everything. But at the same time, I want to have know where the roots are, and the roots of the school. Um, this place is called Freddy's Modern Kung Fu. Kung Fu is a Chinese word. All right, so. I'm still promoting the Chinese martial arts and that's the foundation but I also realize the limitations of just sticking to one and basically being able to diversify and being versatile in a lot of different things that you could do you know punching, kicking, um, knee striking, elbow striking you know joint locks you know groundwork, weapons training um, just, just everything you know as far as a survival method is concerned and that's what um, that's basically what I want to focus on but as far as going back to these wooden dummies um, all these wooden dummies I really I really like them a lot you know they're all high quality I do recommend them and there's really not that many places out there that actually sell them I mean you can look online as, and try to find places but there's not that many um, but the place that I normally get it from is everythingwinchung.com and they have some good prices there and um, they ship it over, over here very quickly which is really nice so I do recommend um, you know taking a look at their website if you're interested in purchasing one but um, but yeah for the, everybody out there that's practicing the martial arts I think it's especially nowadays with all this technology and the people learning online I think it's important for us to figure out where our roots are and figuring out if we're going to represent the Japanese martial arts the Chinese martial arts or the Thai martial arts or or like or if we're going to practice American combat sport um, I think it's important you know to just kind of choose what you're going to represent 
you know, I don't, I don't really believe that we can just represent everything. Um, I think we gotta have a one-pointed focus and, and know where our heart is and just basically use that as the root. But it doesn't mean that we can't practice other techniques and other ways. It's just that we know, we have to know, you know, what we're gonna decide to promote. And, um, you know, I've been trained for many years and I've come to this understanding you know that, that that that's very important. You know to kind of know where your roots are, and when people choose a martial arts school, to just basically be loyal to the school that you choose. You know I don't I, I'm you know operating school, running a school. One of the most frustrating things is just encountering people that just come and go, and there's no loyalty, there's no commitment. They're not they don't care about the school. They only care about themselves, and it's all like focused on them, you know, and that's, to me, it's just, um, it's very disappointing to see that, and I want to promote something different where the people that, that practice the martial arts, they should figure out more about themselves, what makes them happy, and then find the art that's the right fit for them, and then basically stay committed to that, stay loyal to that, and um, that's what I recommend, you know, as a school owner, and then also as somebody who's practiced the martial arts for many years and trained in, you know, you know, different places and, you know, coming to this, this, um, you know, understanding took some time, you know, but basically I really want to promote Bruce Lee's teachings and the Chi Kung Do and um, the Chinese culture and I'm just doing my best to try to keep that spirit alive. I don't want it to die. You know, because you see a lot of Taekwondo schools around everywhere. You might see karate schools, you might see some boxing clubs, but you don't really see, like, Chinese martial arts, you know, around. Everybody that walks around here always calls this place karate. They always call this place a dojo. But this is not Japanese. You know, this is not karate. This is not a dojo. Um, I just want to keep that Chinese spirit alive, you know, the Chinese ways. And um, it's very important for me and for the people that I teach to um, to also put the effort to work with me to represent, you know, and promote the Chinese martial arts. Um, you know, I know that the Chinese restaurants are very successful, but it doesn't seem that they put much effort into the martial arts industry. The martial arts industry is pretty much heavily promoted by the, the Koreans and the Japanese, but the Chinese is very much almost non-existent. And um, I want to be one of the, the, the first, you know, one of the few people out there to be, you know, promoting the Chinese martial arts. And with the wooden dummies, these are pretty much one of the big symbols of the Chinese martial arts. Bruce Lee, um, Wen Chun is known for these wooden dummies. And uh, Chole Fut, which is the art, you know, the style that I started practicing, they're known for their wooden dummy. Um, Bruce Lee studied Wing Chun, which uses these wooden dummies. And then he developed the Jeet Kune Do, which he created his own version of the wooden dummy. Only difference is they put the neck, he put the neck on there. And then for me, representing Fred, Freddy's Ma Kung Fu, this wooden dummy is a big, big um, symbol for this school and um, representing one of the big symbols. Just like in boxing, they got the punching bag and they got the gloves, that's their symbol. Um, those are their symbols. Cage fighting, they got the cage and they got the smaller gloves. That's their symbol, okay? Taekwondo, um, you know, they're, they're known for, you know, a lot of those kicks. Basically, Taekwondo, their symbols is pretty much breaking a lot of boards. They, like, they love breaking boards. So that's kind of like one of their symbols. You know, so every, every, you know, every martial art out there kind of has this unique attribute to kind of separate themselves from other arts to say that this is our symbol. So Muay Thai, they're known for the elbows and the knees. Boxing is just all hands, that's it, you know. Um, so you notice that every little thing that's a little different in the martial arts, they, they, they identify themselves to be different from these little symbols. For me, one of the biggest symbols will be these wooden dummies. It's going to be the firearm and things like that. Um, 
those gonna be one of you know pretty much some of my main symbols to just to just kind of take myself away from that combat sport and represent something different and that's what I wanted to share with the people.